We are talking about permutations and combinations lesson number six and we're going to learn how to solve problems with permutations and combinations. Now just for review, remember we're talking about fundamental counting principle which tells us that the number of ways to do things, if we do all of them it's A times B times C. We can think of these as columns, as stages. Stage one is A many ways, stage two is B many ways, stage three is C many ways, and the total number of ways to do all of them is going to be the multiplication. Factorial notation, n with an exclamation mark, which means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, and down by 1 all the way until we get to 1, n is a natural number. We should also remember that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Number of permutations from r, from n, n p r is equal to n factorial over n minus r in brackets factorial with repetitions n factorial over a any repetitions of one letter perhaps and of another one and then of another one any type of repetitions here and a is one type of repetition b is another repetition of a different letter perhaps and c is also a repetition of a different letter here number of combinations from r of r from n and c r or in other words, in this notation, is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. In other words, we're not concerned with the arrangement of the objects that we select. We're also not concerned with the arrangement of the objects we don't select. Now, in solving problems, it is essential to determine whether order is important or not, whether we're dealing with a permutation or whether we're dealing with a combination. Taking a look at class example one, how many arrangements of the word poppies can be made under each of the following conditions? Here without restrictions. Well, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. But let's take a look at the repetitions. We have seven letters, and we have a P that is repeated three times. It's going to be seven factorial divided by. 3 factorial for the p's here. So 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, that's equal to? 840. As my son stated, 840. What if each arrangement began with a p? Well, if that's the case, I'm going to use black here and say this p is already fixed in the first position. Now we had 7 letters to start off with. That means that there are 6 remaining letters. And of those six remaining letters, we have two P's here, a repetition of P twice. So this is going to be six factorial then, divided by two factorial. This two factorial accounts for the repetition of P's. So six factorial divided by two factorial is equal to 360. Let me just put this in the box too. In C, if the first two letters are P, so here I'll use my black again. This is fixed as a P. This is also fixed as a P. And then when we see then there's going to be five remaining letters. And if we look at it, here we have the two P's in front. There are no repeating letters then of the five remaining. So here it's going to be five factorial. Or in other words, it's going to be 120. In D, if all the P's are together, then we are going to glue them all together and keep them as one. So this is one unit of P, P, P. And then the other objects are O, I, E, and S. So when we look at that, we see one object, two objects, three objects, four, and five objects. So there's five objects. And here, that means then the arrangement of these five objects is equal to five factorial, which is equal to 120. In E, if the first letter is P and the next one is not P, then we'll have to fix then the first one as P. And then for this next letter, we have to make sure it's not P. 
So what are the options here? We can either have, it could be an O, an I, an E, or an S. There's still two P's remaining, but we're not allowed to include this in our list. So right here, we're saying that there's four choices for the letters that can go in that second spot. Then afterwards, in this spot, then we will have the two P's that we didn't use plus the three other remaining letters. that we didn't use here because we're only putting one letter there. So those three remaining letters that we didn't use here plus the two remaining P's we haven't used, that's five. And then it will continue down four, three, oops, two, and one. And so here you would have, this is fixed now. And so here this is going to be four times five factorial. 4 times 120. Oh, we have to remember then that we have these two p's though. So we have to divide by 2 factorial. And so this is 4 times 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. 120 divided by 2 is 60. 4 times 60 is equal to 240. So I used a hybrid here. I had this fundamental counting principle, but I also accounted for the fact that there are two P's here that we could repeat. Let's take a look at class example number two. A class consists of five girls and seven boys, and we're looking for a committee. It needs two girls and three boys. Determine the number of ways that this committee can be chosen if there are no further restrictions. Now here I highlighted the word committee because it, we should realize that when we're talking about a committee and when we're reading the question, it seems that the roles on this committee are non-distinct. That means that the order of our selection is really not an issue, which tells us then we're talking about a combination. If there were specific roles like president and secretary and otherwise, then the order in which we select people does actually matter. So no further restrictions. We need two girls out of five girls. So that's five choose two. Fundamental counting principle tells us we're going to multiply with the boys. We have seven boys, but we're going to be choosing three boys. And this is equal to 10 times 35. So this is 350. Okay, in part B, Johnny, the principal's son, has to be on the committee. So let's just, as one of the persons on the committee, we'll just put Johnny right there and fix him into that position, which tells us that there's not seven boys anymore. There's seven minus one boys left to choose from. Or in other words, six boys. There still are the five girls. So here, we're going to say then it's going to be five of the five girls. We're going to still choose two. And here, we're going to multiply this by six, choose three. We're using six now because Johnny, oh, we're not choosing three, we're choosing two. Johnny is already on the committee, so we only need two more boys. We could also, say that Johnny is chosen. So out of Johnny, we choose one. That's going to be equal to 1 times 10 times, what's 6? Choose 2. It's 15. And so this is equal to 150. All right. C, the twins Peter and Paul cannot both be on the committee. Hmm. Well, if they cannot both be on the committee, let's use a complement in this case. Let's first try saying the number with no restrictions. So just taking a committee just from the 12 people that are there. And then we're going to subtract the number where both Peter and Paul are on the committee. Both Peter and Paul on. 
Okay, if that's the case, then if we've taken out all the possibilities in which Peter and Paul are on the committee, then what's left then would be that they are not both on the committee. All right, so no restrictions. Then that's equal to what we found in A, right? 5 choose 2, 7 choose 3. That's 350. I know I said 12 before, but we have to make sure that we're choosing the right number of girls and the right number of boys. Now we're going to subtract. How do we get both Peter and Paul on the committee? So we fix Peter and we fix Paul. And that means then we're still choosing our two girls, but we lost Peter and Paul here. And so we only have five boys remaining to choose only one position. So this is going to be 350 minus 10 times 5. So it's 50. And so our end result then is going to be equal to 300. There are 300 ways in which the twins cannot both be on the committee. Okay, let's use the following information to answer the next class example. We have David, Stephen, and Helen. They're trying to answer the following homework question. Students in a band practiced five popular and six classical music compositions. For the school concert, they're going to choose a program consisting of three popular and two classical music compositions. If the order of the compositions does matter, determine the number of different programs which can be presented. And here is the key words, right? It says that the order matters. When the order matters, then we are going to look to permutations. So the students' answers to this question, here we have David, it's 11P5. Stephen says 5P3 times 6P2. And Helen says 5C3 times 6C2. Each student is convinced they're correct and asks their teacher to check their work. And then the teacher asks the students to write the answers on the board and asks the class to discuss the merits of the answer. If possible, let's see the merits of each of these answers and indicate errors in any of David, Stevens, or Helen's reasoning. So let's take a look at this class example three. Feel free to pause the video and think about your own answers to this question. But let's talk about each one here now. So we have David, who says 11 P5. Well, this is like say, saying take 11 songs, 11 of these songs, and arrange five of those songs in order. Now, what he's missing and what the error David has is that he's missed this fact that we have need three popular and two classical music compositions. Remember, there are five popular and six classical music. So here, if he just takes up all the 11 songs and then arranges five in order, he's also including you know, cases where it could be all five classical music. And that doesn't follow the rule here that we have in the program. So that's an error or an assumption that he could just lump them all together and just choose any five. Here, let's take, take a look at Stephen. Well, Stephen has five P3, six P2. So this here, the five P3, he's saying order three of the popular, and that's, that's fine, right? Order three of the popular. But it doesn't say the order of the compositions where you can mix up the classical music and the popular music. He's saying, let's play only the popular music first and order that, and then play the classical music next after that. Or in other words, you could have thought of it as classical first and then popular, but even that order changes it by doubling that, right? So Stephen, then he has an error so because he is grouping, he's grouping the popular and then grouping the classical, which doesn't order the whole concert. Well, what about Helen? Well, Helen says, let's take any three songs, and we don't care about what order they are in, because remember here, this C 
with combinations. We're not concerned with the order in which the songs uh, are arranged. So here Helen has chosen the right songs, right? Need three popular and two classical. But what she's missing is ordering those five songs. Her error, she's forgotten to order the five songs or arrange the five songs. So really, Helen is the closest here, and it should look like this. We have five choose three times six choose two just to get the number of, just to get the songs that we're going to be playing. And then we're going to be talking about the order. So this is going to be the five factorial. And here's the explanation. Here is which three three pop songs? Right. Which three pop songs am I going to use? So there you go, that's that part. And then here this says which two classical? And we're not concerned about order right now. Which two classical songs am I going to use? There we have it. Now that we have the five songs that are in our program, now arrange those songs in order. Arrange those five songs. And so when you do that, then you will finally get the answer. 18,000 programs are possible. Again, a little against in intuition because it's such a large number. But that's correct. Okay, I've already done B in the previous section, and so you're ready now for your assignment. Uh, be sure to check for keywords to see if you're using a permutation, a combination, and you should also check to make sure that you have all the stages accounted for. Good luck on your assignment, and I will see you in class.